What's up, Frigate Chasers? In this video, we put up the mast on our McGregor 26X. If you get anything out of this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, maybe even comment, or uh, send us one of those super thanks, all found down below. What is going on, y'all? Uh, today, we finally made it to Florida, the McGregor 26. We're at Gilbert's Resort. Parking is way over there. We got our launch here power lines over there so we got to take this spot to put up the uh the mast so because this is our first time with this boat johnny and i kind of i've been down to florida a few times while on shannon's boat johnny never has been in florida waters we don't know if the boat's even going to survive so we're finally going to take the opportunity to make a video of us putting up the mast we've done it about a dozen times now so maybe it's time that we share a little bit now this, not saying this is the proper way to do it, this is just how we do it. Let's go. All right, so first thing we gotta do is get ready to slide the mast back. So, it's gotta slide all the way back from there. We gotta hook up, remove that bolt, and that bolt's gotta go to there. We wanna be able to access our rigging and everything and it's all bungee corded way up there so we just do undo our bungee cords about halfway down for starters and then we slide the mast then we undo everything else so we do travel with some ratchet straps keeping the mast from just swinging back and forth or bouncing up and down Valerie's taking those off for us right now good honor we take the bungee balls off back to where we've got our spreaders and that's as far as we go because if i remember correctly we can still reach these bungee balls from the cockpit when we undo these wires to put the spreaders in the reason we don't take it all apart and put the spreaders in beforehand is because then when you move the mask back you got that to deal with safety lines to deal with which we don't want to do so we're going to wait to put the spreaders on and take the rest of these off till we get the mast slid back. All right, so we've got our line grabbing pole thingamajig hooked here on the mast. And that's what keeps our furler from falling off and breaking whenever we're traveling. Well guys, we forgot to record us walking the mast back. So we're gonna show you that now in reverse. This was actually later when we were taking the mast down, but you know, you can imagine, same thing, other direction. Pull your pin off the front on the bowsprit, walk it to the back, to the mast step, reattach it, or the other way around, depending on which way you're going, like this. So these came on the quick pins for the mast base and whatever. We got several of the quick pins. They come with one curly Q one and one like this. Well, we took two just like this to put on the mast pin because these are less likely to snag, fall out. Next step is untangling all the lines, all the uh, the stays, the cables, all that, which is what these two are doing. And then we can start hooking that stuff up. Putting the spreaders in, trying to make sure that all the lines aren't tangled first. All right, so we're all untangled. We got our lines hanging down the sides on each side. Untangle them, make sure they're in a good position there. Yep, I think we're good to go. Back stays hanging way off the back at this point. Johnny is hooking up the side stays. So, correct the moon doll. Oops, upside down. These are my favorite piece of the McGregor right here. I love those things. I absolutely love them. <laughs> the doohickeys? Yeah, they're uh, easy to see and easy to work with. And come out real easy and stuff and easily, I mean, you can hang on to them. They never drop in the water or anything. <laughs> anyway, he's being sarcastic. So we're hooking up the side stays. We want to make sure that the one that goes through the spreader is towards the back of the boat, the back hole. As far as these go, you want the slot of the two stay clamper whopper things facing each other or else they won't have enough room to actually be in there all right that's what we know so far 
All right, so we got the side stays on. At this point, this is what we're looking like. This white rope here we've added with some tangs. We use that to uh, raise the mast with the winch system up front versus using the topping lift, which we used to use, but it's on the bottom side and it kind of did like this with the mast, as you can see that. So we did the tangs on the front, works a lot better. And then once it's raised, we can use that as a safety line tied off to the bow in case the front stay gives away. So the back stay will get hooked up after the mast is raised. This is what we're looking like at this point. We run them to the outside because that's the way they need to go. Probably end up putting it up like this to keep us from catching on the way up. But before we do all that, we have to attach the baby stays. And we'll be doing that in a second. Hi team. Hi. And maybe I'll let one of them. Brought to you by the Key Largo Diet. See me <laughs> for how to lose two pounds, 20 pounds in two days. Are we explain the Largo Diet or are we explain yeah, the Yeah, give, give them the Largo Diet. No, probably no. better not. You'll actually put it in the video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, we're on water break. It's gonna be 85 or something like that today. So we're trying to move nice and slow means we're not gonna be breaking any records today but uh and we want to make sure we do everything right because this isn't mark twain lake right we got to make sure we're good to go when we leave here not have to worry about it just have some fun next step baby stays all right baby stays are on that's what this should look like bolted in up here down only used for mast raising. Then you take them off. There. Yes, Johnny. What? Only use these for mast raising, and then you take them off. Put them away. We're going down too. If you don't take them off, we forgot to take them off one of our first times out, and we were tripping on them. We ended up finally well, the taking them off on the stuff, water. The jib kept getting caught in it, and all kinds of different things. We didn't know no different. Yep, they will cause problems. Yeah, you don't want them on there when you're sailing. Yep, baby stays are on. Next step is to hook up our mast raising system. All right, this is the mast raising system. We always keep everything all bungee balled on it so it doesn't get twisted and weird. In fact, Still does anyway. everything that is block and tackle, we try to bungee ball up as best we can so we don't have to figure out how to reorganize it. So we're gonna take this part, attach it. One end's gonna be down here. Probably not this end, I don't remember just yet. And then, nope, that end actually goes down here. What? Nope, you're right. Yep, that end goes there. Where else it can go? Okay, mast raising system is up. I'll get on the ground and give you a better angle of this in a minute. This next but... part is optional when you uh, actually raise the mast. Uh, sometimes you can do it shirtless, sometimes you don't do it shirtless. Depends on what your physique for the day looks like, but uh, it's a bit cooler to crank this thing up when it, when you are shirtless. But I will uh, save you all from my dad bod and do it with my shirt on. All right, so we got the mast raising system. This is how it needs to look, going back under the baby stay. We've got our furler on the wrong side of the baby stay. We're gonna have to fix that before we can raise it. But we have this tied up. This is our add-on raising rope slash safety rope. Like I said, we used to use the uh, topping lift, but we don't anymore. So we've got our back stay and our topping lift hanging out the back way back there. And I'm gonna get on the ground and show you what this looks like from the ground. All right, this is how we're looking from the side. Definitely make sure your furler and your mast raising line is under the baby stays. We find it's, we don't, you wanna situate your uh, side stays in a way that they're not gonna get tangled on their way up. Double, double and triple check all your lines to make sure you're gonna be able to get them once you raise everything up. If we 
We almost left our topping lift tucked into our jib bag and that would have meant that we wouldn't have been able to get our jib bag down probably Most likely. and we probably would have had to set the mast back down so double and triple check all your lines and everything before you go to raising it or else you will regret it uh, I want to make sure everybody knows that Weber sells helm covers you can get those at your local Ace Hardware store Usually they're on uh, clearance for $16, and uh, they, they work nicely. So if you've got an auto helm that you're trying to protect from road grime going down the road, Weber. All right, so I think we're ready to go up. We got our water girl, thank you. She's also our bungee ball girl. You gotta have one of those. Every time a bungee ball comes off, you throw it right at her and you're ready to roll. Last thing we had to do before we raise it is take off that last bungee ball that's keeping the furler from falling overboard and we can start to crank water break johnny's gonna be cranking the winch to raise i'm cranking i'm gonna be holding the uh the furler make sure it doesn't fall overboard because you want to walk this sucker out and then my job on the end will be to put this pin in once it's up with four stay Okay, I'm ready. Guys, I just want to take a moment here and thank Garrett for sending us a super thanks on one of our previous videos. Garrett, it means a ton. Not getting rich on YouTube, that is no lie. In fact, it barely covers the cost of the equipment to even film for this channel. So, uh, thanks again, Garrett. You should use your right, good we're, we're hooked on the ladder. Double and triple check all your lines. Make sure nothing's gonna get in the way or be tangled on the way up. You gotta take that out of the, so, out of the bag. So well, you know, while you're standing here cranking, it's always a good idea to stand right underneath the mast. <laughs> that way, if something happens and the rope breaks or something, you get a notification on top of your head that says, hey, something broke. <laughs> so another thing though, to keep the mast going this direction, that's not leaning over his head, because he's cranking on that side, we have the furler on this side, so the mast is actually swinging out this way. If it was to drop, hopefully it would clear his head. <laughs> Rolling! Rolling. <laughs> yeah, it goes auto black every like two minutes. As you go up, you get stronger. Your muscles are like, you're doubling your muscle strength as you go up, I've noticed. And by the time you're up, you're like Conan. Conan, <laughs> the sailor boats. Conan, the sailor man. See, I'm like Conanian right now. So this is one of the reasons why it's easier to put it together on land than it is in the water. Because imagine trying to sit here and put this pin in. Second note, I don't think we covered earlier, after we put the furler on, we actually wrap some duct tape around it to keep the pin in there, because I get nervous about that curly cue, and I'm glad we did, because the anchor line snagged that curly cue while we were out at some point, and that curly cue was just barely hanging and dangling off, which could result in the demasking, so I highly suggest that you duct tape your furler pin on and run that safety line rope to the top with an extra set of tangs like we showed you earlier. Okay, one thing we forgot to do before we raise the mast, plug the mast in and check the lights. So now it's gonna be hard for us to see if they're working with it way up in the air. So, we're gonna check it out though. And Johnny's working on putting on the back stay. Pretty simple, we got the little the rope kind. 
goes into the goes in like that down to there and then you pull it tight really simple <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it. Hey, there you go. Yeah, that's it. And it's that. As simple as that. <laughs> okay, we confirmed that uh, the mass lights aren't working. So, we've got to troubleshoot that. Hopefully, we don't have to put the mass back down. We'll get back to you soon. We just got so gung ho to get this project underway in this video and show you guys what's up. We just forgot to test it. And of course, we haven't put the mast up in like a year. So there's always something. Prepare yourself for it. That's not a good idea. Okay, crisis averted, we think. Johnny found a bad connection right here at the bottom of the mast. We were able to see that the top light is coming on, but the front light, we can't really see whether or not it's coming on or off in the sun. So we'll check that again tonight and hopefully we'll be good. Next step, taking off the baby stays and then we gotta put the boom on. At this point in time, you can also take off your hoisting system. No problem. Got the back stay nice and tight. So we're ready to do that. We're gonna take off the hoisting system and tie up our safety line up front. We got our mast raising system off and all bungee balled up. Keep the lines nice and tight and neat. And it goes back in the boat. Baby stays, don't forget to take those off. We're gonna take them off and I'm not gonna show you what it looks like afterwards. So get a good look now. All right, y'all, what's up? So. It got hot, and after dealing with those lights, we called it for that day. Came back and put the stuff up on the next day, but uh, we didn't run any cameras, so let me just show you how everything finished up. So, the boom is on, okay? This is how we run it. The topper lift, of course, the topper lift is currently very tight because we want it up and out of the way and then tied over to the side. Our main sheet is on. And I know everybody's gonna tell us that that is wrong. We already know this. This, most people run to here. Actually, they run this upside down, the whole thing upside down, and they put the locking part here. Well, we didn't like how that made the pedals to wiggle. So, we added a we added a U-bolt right there, and that makes it so we can run it upside down and we get along with it just fine and it feels better and safer for us whoa come through make, make a, a hole, hole. <laughs> boom and mainsail mainsail goes into the bead track once we do that we always just keep the sail on there and bungee it on we never take it off fold it nothing like that but then you gotta attach the boom and we've got a reef right now so it's gonna be hard to see but you gotta attach the boom to the gooseneck right there with this pin and then attach the mainsail right here with that pin. And then you can start sliding your sail cars in in this opening. These are the sail cars. If you're putting up the entire main, all those will be in there. Right now we're reefed, so you can see them. Then you gotta have a pin here that goes under them. We used to have a little locking deal that would hold them in there, but uh, we lost it first day. So that didn't work out so well. That's why the previous owner drilled this hole there. It's very crooked and it only goes in from one direction, but it does the job. You have to attach your main halyard to the top of the mainsail. Again, make sure all your jib cars are facing the right direction when you feed them on. I've never done it backwards, but Johnny did, so he's not perfect. He did one backwards one time. There's a big twist in the sail. So right now we have the main halyard bungeed back so that the halyard isn't slapping against the main sail or slapping against the uh, the mast. With this loose, that line will go up to the top of the mast, back down this side, through here which is something we added. I don't know if everybody has this or not, but we added that so that we're not tripping. 
then over that pulley and down along here and boom hooked in and you're good to go then you take your jib lines we got them a little twisted right now but it's all right this one's loose because we're using it to hold the hatch open overnight with a bungee cord but you take your jib lines come down to your jib car i think i hope that's what that's called and back hooked in right there and we found that the winches are kind of useless except for raising the mast i guess that's the setup sorry you missed part of it but uh there it is And to finish off, so you know about reefing, there's a grommet here. We have a rope tied in it, so we can take our main, I don't know what this is, tensioner that normally goes here in the main sail, goes straight back to here. We hook onto this one, pull it tight. This is your reefing point mid sail. And then these red bungee balls, which we can't really see. We didn't color code them for any specific reason other than they're the only bungee balls we have with the elastic that will go through these tiny little grommets so we've got then all these really do is to keep your sail clean after you reef it and we try to roll the sail up in there to keep it from ballooning and that's it what about four miles on the icw yesterday from gilbert's resort which i'm gonna i got a review coming for that we're out in front of schnooks at key largo that's how far we made it from gilbert's resort to Snooks. We ate there the other day. We decided we want to go back, so we did that. It's a great place. Check out Snooks. Great anchorage out front. Dingy dock right there at the restaurant. See you guys in the next video. All the Florida adventures coming at you next. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, maybe even hit us up with a super chat. All of that really helps out the channel and frig it out.